Welcome to Writer Spark, the podcast with tips and tricks about fiction writing. I'm your host, Melissa Bourbon, national bestselling author, developmental fiction editor, writing coach, instructor, and founder of Writer Spark Academy. Wherever you are on your writing path, Writer Spark has tips, tricks, and lessons for you. Today, we're going to talk about three tips for writing great compelling fictional characters. So grab a cup of something tasty, settle in, and get ready to ignite your writer's spark. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Today's podcast is about tips for writing great fictional characters, because when you really think about it, All of the books that you read, that you come back to, books that become iconic, books that are bestsellers, it's not so much about the plot, it's more about the characters. It's about characters that resonate with readers. So when you are plotting your books, all of that is great. You need to have a a plot, you need to have story structure, you need to have a story arc, of course. But one of the key things is to make sure that you have a character who has growth, that you have a character who is compelling, that you have a character that readers care about, that they can see themselves in. Readers have to be able to see themselves in some character in a novel in order for them to care. That's true of movies too and television. If you don't care about the characters, for what reasons are you going to keep watching or reading? In a lot of instances, you're not. My husband puts down books all the time because he can't relate to any of the characters that he's reading about. So it happens. Creating compelling characters is key. And in great part, it's contingent upon how those characters engage with the plot. Do things happen to them or do things happen because of them? That's a question you need to ask yourself. A character to whom things happen is not nearly as interesting as a character who makes things happen. So here we go with some tips on how to write compelling characters who are active participants in their stories. Let's do a character study first. I'm going to use Ivy Culpepper, who is the amateur sleuth for my bread shop mystery series. The first book is called Needed to Death. As you probably know, cozy mysteries have punny titles, so needed to death, and this is a bread shop series. Here's a first scenario. Ivy's mother has just died. She returns home to be with her father and her brother. She was in Texas for college, and she's from uh, coastal central California, and so she's returning home to California from Texas. She starts taking a bread making class for no particular reason. One of the classmates dies. The bread shop owner, named Olaya, is a suspect. Although Ivy likes Olaya, she doesn't really want to get involved and chooses not to. A few clues happen to appear in her path. The police find the clues too, and the case is eventually solved, but not really because of Ivy. Not because she sought out anything. Not because she worked to solve the case. The problem with this scenario is that she doesn't do anything active. She is not an active participant in the investigation. And it's a mystery book, but she doesn't actively try to solve the crime. That's pretty boring. That is definitely not the making of a good book, and it is definitely not the making of a compelling character. Okay, let's look at scenario two. Imagine that our heroine is much more active in the plot. The situation is the same. Ivy's mother has died and she's come home to be with her family. She meets Alaya and is convinced through Alaya to take the bread making class. It isn't long before she knows she will learn so much from Alaya, not only about bread, and that baking bread is going to be therapeutic for her. So now we have a reason for her to be in this class. And then someone dies. And because Alaya is a suspect, Ivy does get involved. She likes this woman and she feels strongly that she's innocent and Ivy's moral compass and her her penchant for righting a wrong means that she can't sit back and be a passive observer while the police investigate. She follows leads, uncovers clues, and ferrets out the truth. Ultimately, it's because of her cleverness and tenacity that the killer is brought to justice. The result... The result of the second scenario is much more interesting. It's a much more interesting story. The reader is by Ivy's side throughout the investigation, trying to unravel the clues and make sense of what happened. She is 
doing things. Things are happening because of her, not just randomly happening to her. And that's a big distinction. So the first tip then in writing a compelling character is to make sure that that POV character has a clear internal and or external goal, depending on the scene. Goals change from scene to scene. You have an overarching goal for the story, yes, but you also have scene goals, and that character has to have a goal for each scene. Something needs to be stopping that character from achieving the goal, however. That's the conflict of the scene. We'll talk about this another day, but there's goal, motivation, and conflict. That's a key element of any scene creation. So for example, going back to making sure that your character has an internal or external goal, Ivy likes Aliyah. She sees her as an aunt figure, which she needs. Her mother has just died. Because of this, she wants to act, but fear or lack of confidence or some other reason stops her from getting involved. So that is the goal. She wants to get involved, but what's stopping her is the fact that she's not actually a private investigator or a law enforcement. So this is the conflict. And if you look at this in terms of the hero's journey, this is the ordinary world and the call to action and the refusal of the call. So we have a goal. We have something that she wants to do, but something is holding her back. Okay. So that's tip one. Tip two, instead of having things happen to your character, make your character make things happen. So scenario one, in this scenario that we just talked about, Ivy is a passive participant in the investigation. She's not acting based on her goal of wanting to help Olaya and yet feeling like she can't or shouldn't. Ivy happens to go for, let's look at a potential clue. Ivy happens to go to the library where she finds a book on a table. She flips through it for no apparent reason. And lo and behold, she finds a clue. Not very exciting because Ivy didn't make that happen. She didn't follow a trail of breadcrumbs that led her to the library and to finding that book on the shelf where she then finds a clue. She just happens upon it for no apparent reason. That's not very exciting or compelling. We don't, we're not getting much personality or interest in Ivy as a character. Now, if we take that same scenario and apply the stimulus response result to the situation, things become a lot more interesting. She has a goal and she's seeking to achieve it. She needs to find the book and therefore she'll find the clue. So you apply the stimulus response result to a scene and that's really going to help your character become an active participant in the story. The stimulus in this case, Ivy overhears something about a book at the library. She thinks, aha, there might be a clue there. Her response, she makes the decision, remember she's an active participant here, to go to the library and hunt for the book. The result is that she finds the book, which contains a message written on a dog-eared page. So she has actively sought that clue and followed the trail of breadcrumbs that led her to something that's now going to lead her to the next step in the story. So she is guiding us. We are right alongside her as she is making decisions and pursuing the investigation. She's not just randomly happening upon things. And that's a really key distinction, as I just mentioned. All right. Tip three, choice and conflict. Instead of turning away from conflict, Make sure your point of view character faces it head on. This comes down to their decision making. When faced with pursuing a clue or not, an active character is going to go in pursuit. Now, you don't want them to be that character that you think is so ridiculous for falling into a trap or going into a dark alley alone. We don't want action like that. We want smart, clever action. We want there to be smart decision making. But the bottom line is that If there is a decision to make, it's made in a way that propels the plot forward with our character in the decision-making role. So when faced with pursuing a clue or not, an active character is going to go in pursuit. And that is far more interesting than a character who chooses not to act or who just goes with the flow, chooses not to act, but then comes, stumbles across something, happenstance 
which we think, okay, that's contrived. That's not so interesting. But we're there rooting for the character who makes active decisions, who is moving the plot forward. All right, so to recap, tips for writing a compelling character. Make sure your POV character has a clear internal and or external goal for every single scene and for the story as a whole, but for every single scene. And tip two, instead of having things happen to your character, make your character make things happen. They're in charge. They are acting. And in support of that, they are using the stimulus response result formula. So there is a stimulus, something that happens, a response to it, the character reacts, and then a result, which then will propel the plot forward. And finally, choice and conflict. Your character faces conflict head on. Incorporate these things into how you write your character and your character is going to come alive, I promise. There you have it. There is a cheat sheet for this that goes over these elements and you can have it on your computer. You can download it. You can tape it on a wall. It is on writersparkacademy.com. Go to the cheat sheet section. There are other cheat sheets there as well. And come back for more tips and tricks for fiction writing. We've got quick little tidbits like this and also author interviews. We've got one coming up with historical mystery writer Diane Freeman. So be sure to stick around or come back for that. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. As a reminder, WriterSpark has writer-centric merchandise. The link to our T Public storefront is in the show notes. Grab a hoodie, a t-shirt, a mug, or something else readery or writery. They're super fun. Also visit the Writer's Park website. The courses are so great. You will learn so much. So check those out. You can find it all on www.writersparkacademy.com. I'm Melissa Bourbon. Thank you for listening. And until next time, happy writing.